uh, aspect to a um, colder aspect, of course. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No more questions, but uh, there is the possibility afterwards to have uh, a short discussion at the end of these sessions. Now I would like to invite Niels Bertol from the Department of Botany, Innsbruck University. He will talk about plant communities along elevational and temporal gradients of at, at the Gloria sites in the Dolomites. So please, Niels. <coughs> Hello to everyone, and thank you for the introduction, Brigitte and also Lena. From my side, I go more into deep into the glorious sites of the Western Dolomites. And let's look at the research questions of my master thesis. And it is about the plant communities that occur along the south facing slopes below the glorious summits in the Western Dolomites. And are these plant communities connected phytosociologically and also ecologically to the communities that are found on the summits? And how did the ecological indicator values, temperature, soil nutrients, as well as the plant strategy types change from the first to the last survey? And are there any thermophilization tendencies detectable? And at the end, I try to predict if the future, develop, the future development of the summit vegetation. Let's have another quick look at where we are. We are in the Western Dolomites and we have two uh, mountain, little mountain groups. This is the Latema group where we have two uh, summits. The lowest one, Peñola, PNL, and the second highest one is Ragnarök, uh, RNK. And then we are in the Sella group with Monteschutto, MTS, which is almost 2,900 meters high. The geology is a little bit different. The Latema group is made of uh, Latema limestone with some intrusions of volcanic rocks, while the Sella group is made of Dolomitic rocks. We have already seen this. Just quickly, we have the uh, sampling made every 50 meters of elevation with clusters of three per three meters. And in the four corner squares, we recorded every plant species and estimated the percentage cover for every species. And furthermore, we also recorded or estimated some ecological parameters, like for example, the vegetation cover of lichens, bryophytes, and so on. For further analysis, we used also ecological indicator values and plant strategy types taken from Landolt from the Flora Indicativa. And we use this because from previous studies, it showed that they are a reliable tool for analyzing local scale environmental conditions, especially temperature and soil nutrients. And the plant strategy types originate actually from Grime and they, he divides them into three kind of uh, strategies, competitive, stress tolerant, or ruderal. And then there are also some species which have no uh, of these three strategies. We did this to get a functional overview of the plant communities at the slopes and to see if there is a connection with the communities found at the summits. And then also to see if there are differences between the first and the last service made at the summits. We found four plant communities along the transects. Three are grasslands and one is scree vegetation. The transects, the complete transects at Ragnarök and at Peñola are covered by grasslands, while at Monteschutto from 2,500 meters upwards there is scree vegetation. The first community I present is the Festuca Nigestens community. We called it like this because it's dominated by Festuca Nigestens and we could not find in the literature an appropriate association. We have also Antoxantum alpinum and Crocus albiflorus, which, are, which have a high consistency in these plots. But we have uh, also further Acidophilus and Nitrophilus uh, species like Festuca varia and Nardus stricta, which in some of these plots have a high cover, but not in all. Here on the background of the picture, there are some hosts of Festuca varia. 
The reason for this acidophilic, for the presence of this acidophilic species is probably that there are deeper soils. In the front of the picture, we have a typical association for limestone and dolomitic uh, mountains, especially for the grasslands just under the rock walls. And uh, like we see they reach normally the 2,400 meters of altitude. And this is the Seslerio caricetum sempervirentis, one of the association with the highest biodiversity in the Southern Alps, and it is dominated by Seslera carolea, Carex virens, and Festuca norica. Further upwards, at Ragnarök, from 2,400 to 2,700 meters, and to Monte Schutto at 2,450 meters, we find a Festucetum pumilae, which is found in the Eastern Alps on ridges and uh, in places where there are more rocks and scree, and it is dominated by Festuca pumila, and also Cobrese myosoroides is typical for this association. So looks the higher parts of the cella, and it looks like the moon, and there is not much vegetation, and it is called the Mesoles Plateau. It is separated at the south side from the Valastias by a 100 meter high wall, and the plants grow here only in patches and are mainly dwarf cameophytes like Saxifa gasseduides or Serastium uniflorum, and this association was called by Pignatti Saxifragetum seduidis. This is the ordination, the NMDS of uh, these plant communities, and we can see that the three grasslands are placed near together, and they are characterized by these fitted environmental parameters of higher vascular plants and litter cover and a higher number of species. The scree vegetation, the Saxifragetum seduidis, is quite far away and it shows that it has a higher cover of scree solid rock and it is found on a higher elevation. So how do we use the ecological indicator values? We, we classify them into groups. For example, for temperature, we said that cryophilic species are the ones which have a temperature value of 1 or 1.5. And thermophilic species are the species with a temperature value higher than oh, 2 or higher. For soil nutrients, the same. Oligophilous species have a nutrient value of 1 and 2. And meso to neutrophilous species have a nutrient value of 3 and 4. For plant strategy type, we looked for competitive species. And these are the ones which have a CSR value with two or more Cs, like CCC, CCR, and CCS. And all other species are not competitive species. They are the ones who are more stress tolerant, who prefer ruderal areas, or have no specific strategy, the CSR species. Then we calculated the proportion for every plant community, and these are the proportion of thermophilic species in every community, and we can see that the communities which are found on lower altitudes have a higher proportion, also more than 50% of thermophilic species, and with altitude, obviously, they decrease, and Saxifragetum seduides have a very low uh, proportion of um, thermophilic species. For mesotonitrophilus species, it's almost the same, and also for competitive species, it's interesting to see that Saxifragetum seduides have a very low proportion of competitive species, which is also expected. Now let's see how the slopes and the summits are connected. We have a NMDS again, but this time we have also the summit survey of 2001. These are the blue triangles, and the summit survey of 2015 are the red triangles. For every summit, we have always four uh, plots, north, south, east, and west. And we can see that the grasslands are still placed together. And interestingly, the summit of Peñola, the lowest of the three ones, shows that it has a singular characteristic. It is a Caricetum firmae, and it uh, is quite far away from the other associations. And this has to do that uh, it is quite uh, separated from its slope by a secondary summit. And we see also that it is steeper than the slope itself. The uh, summit plots of the Ragnarök are placed in a Caricetum opestris, 
and here we can see that the transition is smoother. The higher plots of the Ragnarök are already quite near to the southerly lying plots of the summit. And the last uh, summit, the Monte Schutter, is on this Mesoles plateau, and therefore it is in the same uh, association like its uh, higher plots of the transect, the Saxifragetum seduidis. How is the ecological connection between slopes and summit? I show you only the mean temperature value, which is the more interesting result. We have the Peñola, Ragnarök, and Monte Schutter. And for every plot, we have calculated the mean temperature value in relation to, its, to the cover of every species. And we can see that the Peñola has uh, this singularity that we saw in the ordination before. Interesting here is that the Ragnarök, the higher plots, have already the same mean temperature value than some of the plots of the summit. So, how about the changes at the summits between the first survey, which was made in 2001, and the last in 2015? Again, we have the proportion of thermophilic, mesotonetrophilus, and competitive species. In this case, you have to say that only for the temperature value we have a significant result, and we can see that on all summits between 2001 and 2015, the proportion of thermophilic species increased significantly, especially Peñola and Monteschutto. Also, the mesotonetrophilus species increased, but this is not significant and Interestingly, the competitive species decreased on Peñola and Ragnarök, while on Monte Schutter on the summit, we still don't have competitive species. For the analysis of alpine plant communities, 14 years are uh, short periods, so this is one of the reasons why we still don't have a significance in the statistics. So we have seen that there is an increase of thermophilic species between 2001 and 2015 on all summits, and this process was called thermophilizations and thermophilization and was observed by the Gloria group on various uh, mountains in Europe and uh, is a process which probably is caused by climate change. We can uh, only say for Ragnarök that it looks like it is evolving towards a more developed grasslands due to the similarity of the ecological indicators between slope and summit. For the other summits, still no prediction is possible because they have also uh, quite a big uh, distance topographically from its slope. Finally, I, would, I want to say that future service should always include the slopes because like we have also heard from Lena, the species which will migrate to the summits are already there at the transects and also at the transects at the slopes we can find some rare and red listed species which is important to record. That's all. Thank you for your attention and I'm glad also to answer in German or Italian. Just ask if you have a question. Thank you very much, Niels, for your contribution. Are there questions? No questions around? Yeah, please. Thanks for this nice presentation. Um, I was wondering, do you think there might be an effect of the uh, operator doing the survey? The during this person year? who is doing yes. the survey? I think there are studies who analyze this and it looks like that there is a, a influence. But like in our case, uh, we have, for example, Martin, which is the second person from the right, who did the service on all the summits, and uh, Lena also participated in some, so in our case it should not be too big, the influence. Thank you. There are some effects, of course, and it was also published for the Gloria data, but um, I uh, have to say that uh, the, the effects are within a tolerable um, amount. 
So if you are interested, you can consider the publication of uh, Fuji et al. In, uh, what's, Lena, if you help me, uh, the year I'm not, uh, I have not in mind the year, but it was published recently, 2018 or 19. So you can uh, have a look at, at that publication. Other questions? No questions? Yeah, Thomas? Can you just explain how you calculate the crime strategies for each single species? But they are given by Flor Indicativa. All? Yes. Okay. Flor Indicativa gives three letters and uh, like uh, CCC, CCR, CCS, if a species is more stress tolerant, there will be three S or two S combined with another letter. And we decided that the competitive species are the ones with two or more C in this value given by Landolt, who used grime as a base. So we have time for another question. If, uh you have a question? No questions around? Yeah, please. Me again. Uh, these individuals are, of course, very rough estimates of the ecological demands of these species. Uh, why did you only differ between cryophilic species with a value of lower than two and all other species were uh, lumped in one category above two? Yes, thermophilic. But this was used also in other studies, yeah. and actually the temperature value goes until four, yeah. but at alpine plants we reach only three, I think was the highest value that we reached. So at the end, I think the margin is okay. But you could, you could go uh, in more differentiated analysis using all sizes of, of, of values which are given by that you like so. Yeah. Of course, that would be possible, but um, as we had already uh, another um, evaluation of the Gloria data, it was, um, uh, yeah, uh, we decided to do it in the same way. But of course, you are right, we could do in it with all the classifications, yeah. So, uh, yeah, please. Ich mache es mal auf Deutsch. Ich denke, es ist auch ganz interessant, mal jetzt sich die Ausbreitungsstrategien dieser verschiedenen Pflanzenarten anzuschauen. Wird es gemacht in dem Projekt? Nämlich, da wird es ja garantiert auch Unterschiede geben, was also wirklich schnelle Kolonisierer und so weiter angeht. Also das denke ich, ist ein ganz hochspannender Aspekt. Ja, da gibt es Publikationen. Ich glaube, Magali und Matteodo hat das in ihrer Arbeit gemacht, was auch Teil des Gloria-Projekts in der Schweiz ist. Und die hat sich da mehrere ähm, Daten von Landolta angeschaut und auch eben so Strategien zur Fortpflanzung und so Ausbreitung. Und es ist vor allem auch Aufgabe von Lena, dass da äh, einiges noch gemacht wird. <lacht> okay, so 